I've got a story to tell. Here I am. I got people opening doors for me. I finally made it. This is amazing. Oh, oh, hang on a second here. Let's get rid of the peasants first. Let's lock them out. Mm. Oh, man. Haven't been able to find anything useful for my son to do. Can't even get him to mow the grass for me. <laughs> but here, here he is, driving me around. 17 feet, over 400 horsepower. Look at him up there. Holy cow. Man, I'm thirsty. Can, does, does he not know that I'm thirsty? Like, is he serious right now? Does he not know that I'm thirsty? Like, give me a Topo Chico, man. What's up? Oh, um, can you open it? Come on, seriously. Do you know who I am? Mm. Let me get adjusted back here. Turn on some air, get my massage on. Let's get into the story here. The reality is, <laughs> you think that I'm this baller in the back of this car, but here I am. I'm out on a playground by myself. <laughs> I'm no one. I don't even have a car. And so it begins. All right, what are we even doing out here? We're making a video. What's on, up? On what? Your car? Hang on, let's start again. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Performance on Wheels. Okay. Um, your car that you bought four weeks ago has been in the shop for three weeks. Well, come on now. Like, we have to start the story somewhere. Okay. Should we go get the car first? Yeah. Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Performance on Wheels. Now that we have a car that we can talk about, let's actually start the video. 2015 Audi A8L 4.0 Turbo. This is a vehicle I purchased. In today's video, guys, we kind of talk about my first couple months of ownership, which has been an absolute roller coaster ride. We're going to break that down today. But before we even get into any details of anything on the Audi or the platform that this A8 sits on, uh, it's important to note that the success of this car, the performance of the car, the future of this car, what we do to this car really depends on you guys and how much you enjoy our videos, our content. I'm talking like horsepower, I'm talking mods. Uh, yeah, it's like a 17 foot car, but we'll get into why that matters here in a little bit. So please hit that subscribe button, please hit that like button, and let's get going on today's video. Once I landed on the platform, which again, we'll cover why this platform, why this car, what was I thinking in the next video, but ultimately uh, we settled on this car and we flew out to Denver, we traveled together, <laughs> that in itself was kind of fun. Little it was pretty airline it was, action. It was pretty last minute because Mother's Day was the next day. You finally found this car and I had plans the next day. Yeah. So we flew out that morning and got home that night from Minneapolis. That was what? A, that was I a don't remember. Drive. 13 hours, I believe. 13 hour correct. drive. So we got on a plane, flew to made, Denver made and drove like back. 11, but small yeah. details. Yeah, small details. It was, mm -hmm. we, we, we cleared up some time. Yes, it was very good. The gas mileage is great in the Audi A8 4 liter twin turbo. Anyways, so during that drive, pretty much within five minutes of leaving the parking lot, uh, once I got the car up to highway speeds, I noticed the brakes were shuttering pretty bad. Like it was obvious there was uh, vibrating in the pedal that you could feel throughout the entire car. Typically rotors, right? Yep. Uh, or something with the brakes, but typically rotors. So I uh, went through all the paces of buying this car. I made sure that all my ducks were in a row. I bought it from a legitimate Audi dealership in Colorado in the Denver area and I made sure they sent me all their inspection reports. I made sure all the documentation was in place, asked a lot of questions, got some very high quality videos of the quality of the car. Um, so I felt very confident about what I was getting. So ultimately we made it home safely in record time and we ultimately enjoyed our drive. Neither one of us sat in the passenger seat the entire nope, time. The entire time we <laughs> sat in the back seat and the driver's seat and it was super enjoyable. Ended up getting some great gas mileage, cruising at pretty high speeds, uh, very comfortably. Yeah, yeah. Enjoyed a Euro in Omaha, Nebraska, which was 
decent. Yeah. But ultimately, it was a great stressless drive home. Yeah, and we use the car for what it's for, is the saloon experience on the freeway. That's one thing that intrigues me about this car. But again, we'll talk about that later in a different I do video. Wanna, I do wanna say one thing that I found very interesting that I learned day one. This is obviously an over $100,000 car mm -hmm. new, and um, it doesn't have adaptive headlights from the factory, which I get there's a lighting package or whatever, yes. but this is an over $100,000 car. My BMW 3 Series had adaptive headlights. That was six years older yeah. than this. All right. So I'm just very surprised that an A8 doesn't come with adaptive headlights. So many good things to talk about in the next video and we will get to those but in today's video let's kind of talk about the storyline so we get home and monday comes around the first business day after the purchase of the a8 and like any luxury dealer would do the salesperson reaches out and asks that we made it home safely and if there were any questions or concerns about the car and me being me Lo and behold, I did have a few concerns about the car that I experienced in our drive home. The biggest one being that shuttering of the brakes, but there was another observation I had when I started getting familiar with the car and going through this, the, the settings. Uh, it actually said that the oil was over capacity. And what I know because of the research and the familiarity I had with the car is that the oil was just changed. It was actually changed, I think three times within two or 3000 miles, just because of kind of the history of where the car went and the dealerships it was at prior to me owning it. Yep. Um, which we will talk about that because there's reasons why I chose this car. Again, stay tuned, hit subscribe, we'll get into those. So I brought up to the salesperson, hey, yeah, we got home safe, it was great, Euros are okay in Omaha, but hey, the oil's over capacity, uh, I, is that okay, should I be worried about it? Kind of playing dumb. But also, hey, the brakes are shuddering quite a bit, and I'm, you know, I'm, I am a car guy, and I'm pretty sure that means the rotors are bad. Uh, your inspection says that everything with the car is 100% fine, and I can promise you these rotors are shuttering. So what transpired is I get some silly comments from the dealership that like, oh, well, it's normal for uh, Audi brakes to wear out quickly, and it's normal that there's wear on the rotors. And I kind of, you know, I'm rolling my eyes reading these comments, but they did say that, hey, we will take care of that oil change. So I took my car to the local Audi dealership after the 1,500 miles. So now we're up to like four oil changes in a matter of 5,000 miles for this car, which is, yeah, I guess that's good. Um, <laughs> might be wasteful to some. And the inspection that this Audi dealer gives back for the $236 oil change that is done at the dealer uh, that the other dealer paid for, but ultimately they said these brake pads are completely wore out, people are dying, they need to be changed immediately. So I took this back to the dealership that I bought it from because mm -hmm. I had the nice inspection report and said, hey, dealer B says that you, dealer A, the information you provided me is false. So now I have to question the integrity of your dealership and I'm really starting to worry what else did you hide and what else did you lie about? Because somehow my tires even gain tread on my drive home from your inspection to this inspection. So this story really gets interesting and you have to stick with it to make this come full circle. So make sure you stick around because this isn't where it ends about an oil change. There's definitely more to the story. What is the more to the story? Where, where are we at now? So I get home, I start contacting the general manager. I just bypass the salesperson right away. And I'm like, yo, the brakes are shuttering. Uh, your salesperson told me that's normal for Audis. Uh, I don't buy that. And also a lot of your inspection stuff just doesn't line up with what this new dealership is telling me mm -hmm. after they performed an oil change because your technicians were incompetent and they overfilled my oil. Yep, okay. <laughs> so, so, so where did it go from there? So I needed brakes. Clearly this, this dealership B that I went to locally in Minneapolis, they said my brakes were like in dire need of being replaced. $3,600 for an OEM dealership brake job on the Audi A8, which is insane out of the question, in my opinion, for anyone to pay that. Uh, ultimately I opened the door for the general manager of the dealership I bought it from to give me something for my trouble. Yep. And he ended up sending 
ultimately I said, I'll take care of the labor, you give me the parts. I did ask for all four uh, brake pads and rotors, but he just sent me all four rotors. I left it alone at that. I put the brake pads on that I bought at a local auto parts store. I put the rotors on that the dealership had supplied. I do have the, the, the scanner coming for the rear one still, but all in, all in, my $3,600 brake job is less than $250. That's not where the story ends though. That's not bad at all, no. So, so what happened next? So obviously <laughs> we have, we've got all new brakes now for under 200 bucks, then what? So we're about 5,000 miles into ownership now. I've driven the car to Nashville. My wife is now in love with this car. Put her in the back and she felt like a princess. Barking commands at me as we zip down the road in true saloon fashion. Uh, but I'm driving home from work one night, 90 plus degrees in traffic and all of a sudden interrupting my phone call is chimes and dings. The car is dramatically overheating through the red. Uh, it's overheating, alarms are going off. I gotta figure out how to shut this thing off in a hurry. Did you manage to pull over? Or? Yeah, I pulled over, rush hour traffic, side of the road, typical luxury car owner on the side of the road, hoods up, windows are down. What's under the hood? Huh, I didn't like what I saw. Actually, I did, I'm not gonna lie. There's no pools of antifreeze anywhere, so I know like something didn't burst, but what I did see is the reservoir is completely overflowing, so my very basic mechanical knowledge is there's a lot of antifreeze right there in the big storage jug, but there's really no antifreeze over here in the engine that wants to cool down. And yep, the fans are spinning, so that's cool. Um, what do I do? I'm on the side of the road and my mind just starts racing. What do I do next? Holy cow, my whole life flashes, flashes yep. before my eyes. Uh, does my, is my wife gonna yell at me? Is my son gonna disown me? Is everyone gonna point and laugh at me? I have no idea what I'm getting into. But I think back to when I bought the car and I remember I signed this limited warranty contract. And I thought, what the heck? I'm gonna try to drive home, read about this contract, and uh, then we'll go from there. We'll make a decision tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I'm also thinking back to the research I did when I bought this car and was like, I can change the water pump on this. It's probably the water pump and it's probably the thermostat. And it's most likely the thermostat because I read that's one of the big faults of the A8 is to make sure your thermostat isn't leaking, make sure your thermostat isn't faulty. That's common to go out. So I get back in my car, I drive down the road, traffic is still uh, heavy. I make it about two miles and bam, overheating, side of the road, hoods up party over. I read that contract again and start figuring out if I can get a tow truck where I go from here. Mm -hmm. And what I learn is uh, it's a driveline only contract and there's this paragraph that says these parts are covered. And in that paragraph it says water pump and thermostat. So now I go into, all right, we're gonna give this a shot. Instead of me trying to do this labor, I'm gonna see if I can work this contract and this warranty over and get these parts repaired. Yep. So I go back to the dealership that I'm already really not fond of because of the information they gave me that wasn't necessarily correct about brake pad life, but I take it back there, it's the closest option of a dealership that I know the warranty will honor. And what I find out is, Lo and behold, the thermostat must be closed because of everything I told them. I essentially troubleshot the car for them, but they yeah. wanted to troubleshoot it themselves, of course. And they replaced it, and the car's still overheating, believe oh, it or not. great. That's not good. Surprise, surprise, Audi. Yeah, so the car still broke. They won't give it back to me yet. They said the, the, the next service bulletin recommends that they replace not only the water pump, but some sort of coolant valve. And the part, I might be getting the names wrong here, but they, they said coolant valve as an example. The coolant valve, when you Google it, is up by the firewall. It lets coolant into the heater core. Uh, so you have heat in the car and I wasn't connecting the dots. This is yeah. where my questioning of the service writer started coming into play. So from there, he explained everything, recommended that all the plastic around the water pump was replaced as well, mm -hmm. um, which I agree with. It's an older car, the plastic part, sure, replace yeah. it. What I didn't agree with is when I get the text message saying we have great news, the warranty is, re, re, uh, is covering your water pump replacement. They're covering $3,400, however, there's still $2,700 that you owe 
This is awesome that your warranty's covering this. Uh, I start asking questions because this just doesn't flat out make sense to me. $6,000 water pump. A $6,000 water pump replacement. And I've already asked questions at this point. Yep. Like, uh, well, how about you just don't charge me the labor for yeah. that? And don't charge me the part for that plastic part and I'll take care of that myself. And I get responses like, uh, well, we're actually not charging you any labor for that. So I really start asking questions at this point. My flags are going up because they're charging me three times the amount that has been approved. It's ridiculous. And I start looking into further how easy this job is. Let's also mention that we have access to all data, which claimed that this is what, a 6.4.6. 4.6 hour job. Yep. So a 4.6 hour job is what all data said. Not and that's only that, what was approved. Not only that, but you went out of the way to contact Audi of, uh, what was it? St. Paul, Minneapolis, and Rochester. So contacted all three of those dealers, which claimed? Uh, the highest dollar amount was, I think, $2,000 to replace it. Yeah. And ultimately, they said six hours and under between those three dealerships. Again, I'm being charged 14.6 or seven hours of labor. This resulted- what was their, Yeah, what was their excuse <laughs> for that? This resulted in a face-to-face -face conversation with the service manager, which they didn't see me coming. I pranced in there, kind of like, hey, I've been asking the same question like 10 different ways. I was like, hey, buddy, what's up? Up. I've been asking for some sort of itemized breakdown on what these hours of labor represent. And I haven't gotten a response. I'm trying to figure out like, what are you charging me for? The dealer or the warranty and the all data says that this is how much this uh, repair costs and you're charging me this. Can you explain what you're charging me the labor for? Can you give me a breakdown? And the response I get is literally along the lines of, it's just a hard job. Uh, the thermostat is easy to get to. The, the water pump is further in the engine. It's like they have this catalog of like generic things. There is pressure fitted pipes that need to be removed was another comment I heard. No, there's not. Um, so I, I was getting all these different excuses and all these different reasons, but no actual facts on why they wanted to charge me $6,000 to replace a water pump. When I broke down and gave them the details of, hey, your, your dealership rating says that you're a good dealer. Uh, I believe that you guys are a good dealer. The other dealers, your competition in the same town is saying this. This is when the, the, the manager comes to me and says, I don't know if we're gonna be able to make you happy. I feel like you're, you're attacking our integrity. Uh, sir, that's because I am because you're not able to explain why you want to charge me thousands of dollars when your competition is charging this amount. A few days later, I get a text message saying that a calculation error was made and magically that bill went down about $1,300. Get in the car, happy to have it back. Two weeks later, after all this arguing back and forth and me standing my ground, uh, ultimately, I get in, love the car, go to work the next day on my way home with my cooled seats on, loving it. Ding, ding, ding. What's up? Warning, low oil. Stay tuned for our journey on the Audi A8. <laughs> our next video, we're going to explain why this vehicle is awesome, why we chose this vehicle. From there, depending on how many people are joining us for the A8, we're going to start customizing this thing and making this the ultimate sleeper. Hit that subscribe button, get in the next video. See you then. See you guys.